In this video, we'll talk about conditional distributions. We'll talk about conditional PMFs and PDFs, conditional expectation, and the law of total expectation. So if x and y are discrete random variables, then the conditional PMF of x given y is denoted p x given y of a given b, which is the probability x is equal to a given y is equal to b. And the definition of conditional probability says it's the probability that x is a and y is b over the probability y is b. And by Bayes' theorem, we can actually get something like this. Uh, if x and y are continuous random variables, the conditional PDF is the same thing, except with f's instead of p's everywhere. Um, and if x and y are mixed, so one is discrete, one is continuous, then a similar extension can be made where any discrete random variable has a p and any continuous random variable has an f, and you can figure that out yourself. Now, conditional expectation. So if x and y are jointly distributed random variables, um, if x is discrete and y is discrete or continuous, then if I want to find the expected value of g of x, given that y is equal to a particular value, then I'm just going to use the same formula as before. So expected value of g of x is the integral uh, is the sum of g of x times the probability x equals x. Except now we're in the case where we're given y equals y, so all we've done is replace px of x uh, with px given y of x given y. And similarly for continuous variables, well instead of having just fx of x for if we had e of g of x, we're going to condition on y equaling y. And note that these sums and integrals are over x and not y since this ex these expectations are a function of y. So our answer will be in terms of y because we're conditioning on that. Um, so now the law of total expectation, uh, it says if y is discrete, then the expected value of g of x is I can take the expected value of g of x in all the cases where y is equal to y and then weight it by the probability y is equal to y. This is basically the law of total probability, almost. And if y is continuous, then the same thing. You condition on y equals y and multiply by the density, except you integrate. So now in a, uh, let's prove it. So uh, for the case where they're both discrete, so if I have this formula here, it turns out, um, remember that formula for e of g of x given y equals y is the sum over x of g of x times the probability of x equals x given y equals y. Um, and then what we can do is we can swap the order of the summations then this p x given y times probability y of y is p x y of x and y by the definition of conditional PMF or the chain rule. Um, and then when you and we move the sum, we move the g of x inside here because it doesn't depend on y. Then this thing is just uh, the marginal PMF of x because we integrate uh, we sum over all y's, and so this is finally expected value of g of x as we want it to be. So now we're going to. I uh, finally proved that the expected value of a geometric random variable with the parameter p is 1 over p, and we're going to use the law of total expectation, conditioning on the first flip. So we're going to say that the expected value of x is the expected value of x given that we got heads on the first flip times the probability of heads plus expected value of x given tails times the probability of tails. This is the law of total expectation. Again, it looks very similar to the law of total probability. Um, so the probability of heads and the probability of tails is p and 1 minus p. Those are the easy ones. Um, the expected value of x given heads. So if we got heads on the first flip, then the waiting time until our first head was just 1. So that's just a 1. And the expected value of x given tails, well, we're actually in the same position as before because of memorylessness or because the trials are independent. So now we're going to just be one step further, plus uh, we basically started from scratch. And so what you can now do is we have e of x on the left side, e of x on the right side, uh, once you use linearity, and you can solve for e of x. And I'm not going to do the algebra, but after you can look at this, it's not too bad, and you'll get 1 over p, which is really cool. Um, and now, here's another one. If x1, x2, x3, or so on are a sequence of in iid random variables with the same mean e of x1, and n is a random variable with range in the non-negative integers, uh, independent of the xi's, then if I take the expected value of a sum of a random number of random variables, then this expectation is the expected value of one random variable times the expected number of those random variables that we have. This is kind of intuitive, but we do need to prove it. So here's our expected value of the sum of xi's. We're going to use the law of total expectation. We're going to condition on n taking on each value it can take on, little n, and weight it by the probability. Then what we can do is, since we're given n equals little n, we can actually replace this top thing with a little n. And since uh, n is independent of all the xi's, we can drop this conditioning now because we're just having a sum from 1 to little n. And this, we can finally use linearity of expectation as usual to get n times the expected value of x1. Uh, we'll bring the expected value of x1 outside, and we get n times pn of n, and we know that to be the expected value of n.